pro-life uh, position being taken by our our repeat offender, Shellshock. Welcome, Shellshock. It's good to see you. How are you doing? I'm good. Fantastic. And the pro-choice position is being taken by Halloween going up against the seasoned veteran. How are you doing, Halloween? Doing very well. How about you, Mark? Yeah, good. Fantastic. Uh, except for some sound issues. So I apologize for those technical issues we had earlier. It was entirely my side. Discord was lighting up, but Discord is a liar. So uh, that that that's what <laughs> happened there. I, I do apologize to everybody, but we will get started. Taking uh, the uh, pro-choice side, uh, opening us up, is Halloween. Uh, so if Halloween, the stage is all yours. Take it away. All right. Thank you. So uh, first off, just to modern day debate, thanks for having us today. Thank you, Mark, for moderating, and Shellshock for agreeing to have this discussion with me. Uh, so abortion is obviously a polarizing topic, and the irony of two men debating women's rights here is not lost on me. But I think it's important to defend this right and to have the conversation about it, because at the end of the day, I think women's rights are human rights and allies should also speak up on this issue. <clears throat> I think this conversation often gets wrapped up in religious dogma, arguments about its morality, arguing when precisely a fetus becomes a person and appeals to emotion. Personally, I'm not interested in the morality of it, and we can talk about it during the discussion, but I think as soon as you go down these lines of argument, of if we ought to abort a fetus, is it a person? Can we do it at 12 weeks, 20 weeks? We're ignoring the main issue, which is bodily autonomy, and that gets to the legality of it. Uh, so before I talk about what bodily autonomy is, uh, just a quick note. One thing I would caution anyone against is searching for the perfect abortion analogy. The truth is abortion isn't really like much else and no scenario myself or shell shock are going to be able to come up with is going to be completely analogous to abortion. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to present an analogy. It's the classic violinist analogy to illustrate the idea of bodily autonomy for the audience, um, but with a slight change. So imagine you have been kidnapped and sedated. You wake up and find you're on a hospital bed next to a young child who you do not know, but you are being told is related to you. The child has a disease and needs your kidneys to filter it out over nine months. Uh, your kidneys are being used to filter the child's and your own blood. You could unplug from the child, but of course the child will die. And you are being asked to stay in the bed for nine months until the child can live on their own, after which point you can either take care of the child as your own or give it up for adoption. Also, your body is going to be significantly altered after this nine months due to the medication that you're going to have to be on during this process. Most people would say that you are a moral monster for refusing to stay there for nine months, but morality and legality are separate issues. So my main argument is this. No one should be able to control what a woman does with her own body. No person has access to your body. So even if I granted that the fetus is a person, it still doesn't have the right to use that woman's body for nine months to grow. It can be removed at will. Consent to being pregnant can be revoked. It's also important to remember that becoming pregnant is an involuntary action. It is a risk you take when you have sex voluntarily, but consent to pregnancy is not the same as consent to sex. Pregnancy has life-changing ramifications that just aren't comparable to having sex with a partner. So my interest is in safeguarding the principle of bodily autonomy, a principle that extends beyond the specific context of abortion, even to encompass broader notions of personal freedom, I firmly believe that embracing and defending bodily autonomy, you're not only advocating for women's rights, but are also affirming a foundational pillar of human rights that I would hope can resonate with each of us. Uh, thanks. That concludes my opening statement.
thank you so much, Halloween. Um, and that was about three to four minutes. So um, Shell Shock, you've still got 10 minutes if you, if you do want it. Um, something I, before we get started on Shell Shock, something I forgot to mention, if you have any questions in the chat, just at the uh, modern day debate stage questions, and the bot will record them for posterity and send them back to me so I can ask them. So the Q&A will be at the end. Um, and if you have any questions, send them on in. I apologize to everybody. This is not an, an open stage that anybody can, can join. This is a, uh, a scheduled debate between two interlocutors. But for the uh, pro-life side, it's Shellshock. Shellshock, you have 10 minutes. Take it away. I mean, okay. the short human life starts at conception. It's wrong to unjustifiably kill human beings, hence abortion is wrong. Uh, is that, that it? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to head into the uh, open discussion section. Uh, feel free to send in your questions as these two interlocutors go. Uh, Shellshock, you ended with the last opening statement, so Halloween, we'll kick it off to you to start this open discussion. Uh, go for it. Cool, so <clears throat> I'm just curious, uh, Shellshock, do you make an exception in the case of rape or incest for abortion? No. Okay, so you think that even if an 11-year-old is raped, that that 11 year old should have to carry the child to term. The 11 year old would probably need to get an abortion anyway, because she's not physically capable of carrying that child. The, a better uh, extreme hypothetical would be if a 25 year old mentally disabled woman, does she have to give birth to a child? In which case I would say yes. Okay, but you're okay with the 11 year old having an abortion? But only because her life would be in danger. Okay. But that's Got not it. that's not to do with her age, right? Okay. That's it has to do with her physical development. All right. So, uh, you know, a twenty five year old adult woman gets pregnant, wants to have an abortion. Why do you think that she should have to act as an incubator for that child and carry it nine months? Well, I just hate women, man. What can I say? <laughs> okay, I don't okay. believe that. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Halloween, we, are, we need to take this one step at a time, right? Uh, you said that consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy, right? Yes. Do you agree that human life starts at conception? Uh, I'm honestly not interested at when human life starts. I will grant you that human that a fetus is a person i can grant it personhood for the sake of this argument but in my view i don't care if it's in there doing calculus and curing cancer i don't think that any person has the right to someone else's body You're doing calculus. i don't care what okay. it's doing inside the womb i don't care how human you want to make it <laughs> okay we can just assume for this conversation that it is a person Yes. From the moment of conception, because to you, your, your uh, argument will not change, right? Right. Okay, so you said uh, consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy, correct? Yes. Okay, so what about a woman who consents to pregnancy, who wants to be pregnant and then changes her mind? Yep, so just like consent to sex is not consent to continue having sex, right? So... I consent to having sex with somebody, but I could withdraw that consent at any time. She can consent to getting pregnant and withdraw that consent as well. So she can, uh, even though uh, both the man and the woman put the baby there, the baby didn't decide to be dependent on the mother. The mother can still decide to kill another human being. Uh, even though that uh, in in the uh, in the argument of body autonomy, even though the baby, the only reason the baby is uh, uh, sucking the nutrients off the mother is because of the parents' decision in the first place. Right. So I agree that the baby is there outside of its own volition, 
However, the baby is still using another person's body. And that person still has the right to withdraw their consent at any time. In the case of uh, rape, I might agree with you, but in case of consensual sex, I don't think so. I don't believe that. Because if you are allowed to create situations that directly result in another human being uh, being connected to your body and then claim body autonomy, those are just extra steps to murder. Like, for so example... It's yeah, yeah, not go on. murder because it's the termination of a pregnancy. A... A termina the termination of a pregnancy happens to result in the death of a fetus up to a certain point, right? So we stop calling it an abortion at a certain point. We start calling it a delivery when the fetus is viable. But if, you know, if I engage in an abortion, that's simply the termination of a pregnancy. It just so happens that the fetus is going to die, but that doesn't mean that the mother is outright killing the fetus. They're ending pregnancy. There may come a time in the future when we could remove the fetus from the mother and put it into, for instance, an artificial womb. And in that case, the bodily autonomy argument would have no problem with that. It's simply the mother withdrawing consent for the use of her body. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, abortion is not simply termination of a pregnancy. I know a lot of people like to say that, but the CDC refers abortion as uh, something that does not result in a live birth, right? Uh, after using medical uh, equipment uh, to terminate the pregnancy, firstly. Secondly, um, if abortion was considered a termination of pregnancy, we'd be calling childbirth an abortion which is ridiculous. Okay, so it's the difference in viability, right? So, I mean- Childbirth, childbirth, nine month uh, pregnancy, a woman gives a healthy born baby. Right. Is, that a, is that abortion? No, because there's a difference in the viability of the fetus. So uh, for instance, abortion is the termination of a non-viable pregnancy. Delivery, is the termination of a viable pregnancy. That's the difference there. And, and typically we define, I mean, you can use whatever definition you want, but typically we define an abortion as a procedure to end a pregnancy. No, abortion uh, is, again, the CDC refers to abortion something that does not refer, the, uh, does, not, does not occur a live birth. Early delivery and abortions are two different things. And they're, and, by the way, Halloween, you are aware that women do get late-term abortions, right? Outside of fetal abnormality and medical necessity. Like, what I'm is sure a failed happens. abortion? What I'm is sure a failed abortion? What do you mean, a failed abortion? What, what, what do you think I... happens in a failed abortion? A failed abortion to me would be a fetus continues gestating. Like, an abortion to me is the end of a pregnancy. No, a failed, I'll tell you what a failed abortion is. Sometimes when they try, in the second trimester, this is how they perform an abortion. They crush the skull of the baby, they, and then they uh, 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 rip out the body piece by piece, and then they remove the skull, which was crushed initially, right? That's how they remove the baby in the second trimester. Sometimes yep. uh, they crush the wrong thing, like an arm, and then they pull out the baby whole. Okay. Okay, and the babies don't die; they survive. Sure. So, so uh, do you know? Do you know that's why? That's a failed abortion. Do you know why fetuses are killed during an abortion? It makes a lot of money for abortion doctors. Okay, uh, no, I mean, I'm not talking about the monetary stuff surrounding it. I'm saying, when an abortion is taking place, why do they crush the skull? Do you know why? No. It's because it's less traumatic for the woman's health. So it's the easiest way to remove. Go ahead. I'm, I'm like, what the hell? No, why, why does that confuse you? What about the trauma for the baby? Like, that's, that's completely irrelevant. The baby's being removed from the womb 
in the most efficient way possible, right? So in order to have the least amount of trauma on the woman's body, they're making the baby as small as possible to remove it. Listen, listen. The baby needs to be removed anyway, right? Well, I would argue you're saying it doesn't need to be removed. But if we're having an abortion, yes, it has to be removed. So why kill it? Why not give I it just, a chance to survive? Just, well, to I less, just for less trauma? So if the fetus is viable, then I think that we would induce early delivery, right? So we would either have a C-section, we would induce early delivery. If the fetus is not viable, right, it can't survive outside the womb, then it gets removed in the way that you're describing. I'm not, 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 not uh, the, the, the way uh, the abortion procedure I described that happens post viability. You're saying that a fetus can survive outside the womb at how many weeks? 21 weeks. Okay. Uh, that would be third trimester abortion? No, this is late second trimester abortion. Oh, it's late second late trimester. Late. Okay. Yeah, in late second trimester abortions, the viability of a fetus is highly in question. Like that's why third trimester abortions are so contentious, right? Is because there's a viability there. This is the medical okay, field um, deciding this, not me. Halloween, Halloween. Um, uh, and again, this, this is getting back to the woman's right to say that I no longer want this fetus to be using my body. Right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you that, uh, so f for you, uh, a born baby can be uh, killed? No, obviously not. But it, it needs to drink uh, breast milk off the mother. Does the mother not have the right to uh, reject that? Okay, so a mother does not have to breastfeed. You're aware of that, I'm assuming. Go on. Okay, so a, a fetus doesn't have a right to a mother's breast milk. There's plenty of other ways that a fetus can survive without being breastfed. And again, there's a difference between breastfeeding and a fetus literally being attached to your body. Okay, hang on. I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay. I think we have a lull in activity, so we've been going for only about 11 minutes, actually, but um, hopefully Shellshock can be back really fast. Uh, maybe he's looking something up, maybe he needs a drink, which uh, I, I don't blame him at all. Um, I'm feeling a lot more awake, so thanks for, uh, somebody mentioned I look mad. No, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. It's very early here, so don't take that as me being mad. Um, so, but thank you, everybody, for coming again. If you do have questions, throw them into, uh, do just do at and um, modern day or MDD stage questions. And then you can ask your question. I'll get a list of them afterwards and ask them. Um, and I think uh, we probably don't have that many questions, but um, you know, do feel free to send them in. Uh, hopefully Shellshack can be back really fast. And it, it's a great start to a debate as there's uh, certainly a lot of push on either side. And I'm really actually enjoying this. Um, I'm think, I think both sides have brought up really good arguments. So uh, I, I, I do love a good debate. If you are interested in more debates, uh, do go and visit the Modern Day Debate YouTube page where you can get lots of debates from really good debaters, including yours truly. Um, and yeah, I'm so sorry where this isn't sort of an open open stage where everybody can debate. This is a scheduled debate between two interlocutors, uh, the marvelous Shellshock and the marvelous Halloween. And uh, I think I'm the most unprofessional one up here, to be honest with you, because I did have technical problems earlier. Yeah, Anthrax, same deal. Um, yeah, hopefully Shellshock can be back very soon because I'm sort of running out of things to talk about. But if, if when this debate ends, if you do want to uh, keep debating, all those people that want onto the stage to give your view, I'm sure they will have a continuation of this debate in one of the channels. Um, quite possibly, um, I would say, the um, Your Topic, Your Voice channel, or perhaps um, the, uh, uh, another channel. So um, uh, feel free to go in there. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I think I'm fine. You, I think I'm perfectly fine. I think I can handle it. I think I, I have confidence in my ability. Um, so thank you, but I will decline your offer. Uh, very generous of you, though. Very generous of you. Um, and and we have had uh, just debate con on recently. Uh, that that has just ended. So there are a lot of debates out there. Um, I, I I think I think you want that Mark, was if a there's joke. any questions for my side i could take one if we want to pad for time yeah well I, I, it, thank you so much but it is a bit of a back and forth with the questions you know we sort of ask them and get each side's view and i think i think i'd like shell shock a, a chance to respond to to the question as well um give him a chance uh, shell shock have you come back yet or are you still absent from reality uh, are, you, are you there hello yep <sighs> where are we um well this is an interesting debate um i think Yeah, no, I so I, I hear you. Uh, the, these these things are things that just you you fill time with, and they're sort of involuntary. So it it doesn't really um, that you can work on them. There are various criteria in order to work on them, and and I think I will do so. But for the moment, I don't really I don't really mind to be honest with you. It's just sometimes you've got to give your brain time to catch up. And when you are in a profession which you you're supposed to speak constantly, uh, which I have been in the past, you fill that with these these words, and so that is something that I have have become accustomed to, which is a hard habit to break. As as you hear people say, it is a hard habit to break. But I think all habits can be broken. Uh, what's the hardest habit that you've ever broken, Halloween? Hardest habit to break. Um, yeah. Hmm. Maybe I don't break my habits. <laughs> Maybe that's oh. why I'm having trouble. <laughs> You're all in. Yeah. <laughs> well, so there's been a couple for me that have been really hard to break. Uh, one of them was chewing my nails. I used to chew my nails all the time. And the other one was smoking which is a horrible habit and is absolutely awful. It is, um, I, 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 yeah, I, I hope there is a time when cigarettes and, and tobacco are not a thing anymore because it's a horrible, horrible habit. But that one was rough. That was yeah, rough. I stay away from, I, I stay away from cigarettes specifically so I don't have to break that habit because it seems absolutely next to impossible. Um, absolutely, good choice. Yeah, sorry, Shell Shop, are you back? Yeah. That was a sort of a, a bit of a grunt. I'm not sure if that was a yes or a no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. I'm. I'm. I've. I've completely lost where you guys were. Um. I think I was you were on. Brazil. Yep. Right. Go for it. Take it away, Shell Shot. Go for it. Okay. You said there's a difference between breast milk and uh, literally being attached to another person's body, right? Yeah. For an extended period of time. Right, but uh, if uh, ev if a woman has the right to body autonomy, then it shouldn't matter whether it's something as small as breast milk or something as large as pregnancy, right? A woman can withdraw consent to the drinking of her breast milk, yes, just like she can withdraw consent to pregnancy. So if a woman is in a situation where she's the only one that could provide breast milk for the baby, she can choose to let that baby die? So... Uh, this is this is an often used one, and I I first want to point out that <laughs> in modern day, right, it's going to be super rare to find yourself with a child on a deserted island where only you can care for it. I just want to point out kind of the silliness of this hypothetical. However, if you are the guardian of a child, right, if you have parental responsibilities to a child you are legally required to provide care for that child. Now, if someone puts a baby on my doorstep and they leave a note that says, please care for this child, please let it inside to eat your food, whatever, uh, I am not required to care for the child, to become the child's parent. I can call child services, I can have child services pick them up, and they can care for it. 
Okay, so you would force a woman who's uh, who's the only one that can take care of a child to breastfeed the child. Uh, if she is if she is the parent, she has parental responsibility. If she's not the parent, then that's a good that's a good moral question. So if it's someone who has zero par parental responsibilities to a child, and uh, they're in, they're the only person who can assist with it, then I think that they're obligated to assist with the child. But there's a big big difference between right if I'm sitting at the pool and a kid walks into the pool falls in the pool and is drowning and I'm the only one sitting by the pool I'm the only one who can help the child there's a big difference in me like reaching down and picking up the kid and putting it on the side of the pool versus obligating somebody to to have another person inside their body for nine months those are completely different situations but you would force the woman to uh, breastfeed her baby, right? You keep adding all these tangents and not really answering my question. Sorry, I'll answer it uh, more straightforwardly. If she is the parent, she has a legal obligation to care for the child. Okay. So to keep it alive. Yeah, even if it means uh, forcefully giving up your body autonomy and breastfeeding the child, right? Because she has agreed to be the parent. That's correct. Okay, There's so my agreement. question, so my statement would be she has agreed to be the parent from the moment of conception because that's, a, that's and we've agreed during this debate that both of us agree that this is another human life. Okay, so again, consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy in my view. I think we have a fundamental disagreement here. You're saying that if I go have sex, that I am agreeing to get pregnant. And I'm saying that I think people every day agree to have sex, but they don't want to get pregnant. Now, well, before, before we get into that, I, I want to talk about the fact that women that do consent to pregnancy. Yeah, we can, we can, we can bring that in. That's fine. Yeah, so women who do consent to pregnancy who are, are they not legally obligated for the child that they themselves chose to put in that position? No, because we don't grant fetuses human rights. So I don't know if oh, you're aware of this. Oh, oh. I don't know if you're aware oh, of this. Let, him, let, him, let him finish, shell shock, shell shock. Just, just let him finish and, and then, you can, then you can go. So one of the best things that illustrates the fact that we don't grant fetuses human rights is that women can drink if they want to while they're pregnant now it's it's probably you might argue the morality of it i'm not advocating for it but legally nobody can come after you if you drink while you're pregnant because we don't grant the same rights to a fetus that we would grant to a, a human being Halloween, you can't you can't apply to legality the concept is morality we need to understand who's right and wrong I can't just say, well, legally abortion is wrong, therefore you're wrong. You know, women can't get abortions. That's that's not an argument. Okay, our, our legality comes from our morality. You need to explain to me why it's immoral. Now, if you say that fetuses don't uh, have rights, that's fine. You can believe that morality, but don't apply the legality behind. Don't apply the uh, appeal to legality fallacy thing, right? Great. I'm glad I got you to this point. This is the point I wanted to get you with the whole time. So you didn't, I guess, listen to my opening statement. I'm not concerned with the morality of abortion. I'm concerned with the legality of it. So you might care about the morality, but what I'm saying is outside of morality. I'm saying that legally, Women have the right to bodily autonomy, and we don't grant legal rights to fetuses. Halloween, if we were talking about slavery, and I said to you, it's immoral to own a slave, and you said to me, well, I don't care about the morality. I, wa I, want, to, I want it to be legal. Uh, and you, you started making all these claims like, well, it's already... Uh, well, it's already legal to kill a slave. 
if, right? And hence, it's not murder. So I don't know what you're talking about. Like, it doesn't make any sense. We need to under we need to talk whether or not something is right or wrong first, and then move towards the legality argument. You, okay. you, you're so, uh, automatically appealing to the legality. But I could literally say the same thing in Pakistan and say, well, abortion is illegal in Pakistan, so this this isn't even a debate. Like that doesn't make any sense. You're equating morality with legality. Immoral things are not always illegal, right? It's immoral. I don't right? disagree. Can I finish? I don't if, disagree. I just uh, want to killing show human show. beings is wrong. Show show. Show show. Just let him finish. Immoral things are not always illegal. I consider it immoral to cheat on your wife, but legally you can go and do it. I consider it immoral to drink during pregnancy, but legally you can do it. it it's illegal to exceed the speed limit, for instance, but it might not always be immoral. Maybe somebody's dying of a heart attack in the back seat and you need to exceed the speed limit. You're trying to sit here and say that morality equals legality, and I'm completely tossing morality out of it for that reason. I think that moral arguments against abortion are flawed. Okay, uh, is it uh, illegal to own a slave? Yes. Was it illegal to own a slave in the 1800s? No, in some parts of America. South, Southern America. Right. Would you say the exact same thing yeah, 200 years ago where you would say that, uh, well, it's already legal to own a slave and every white man has the right to own a slave. I don't care about the morality behind it. Does that make any sense to you? We would both agree that at that time owning a slave was legal, right? Yes. And we would both agree that owning a slave was immoral, right? I mean, I, yeah. Okay. But so, you would say that yeah. it would still be legal. Yeah, it was legal. That's a matter of fact. And I'm saying yeah. that bodily autonomy is a matter of a human right. It's just a matter of fact. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, it might make you feel icky that no, a, it's not a about fetus idiots. is getting killed, but it's still a matter of bodily autonomy, right? Like, your right to swing your fist ends at my face. It's bodily autonomy. It's just basic human rights that are granted to the mother. Okay, so... Um... If a baby is born, but the umbilical cord has not been cut, can the mother kill the baby because it's still sucking nutrients off that body? No, I, I, we, I, we kind of talked about this earlier, but essentially, once a fetus is viable, uh, once, once the baby can be delivered, I believe that it should be allowed to proceed to term. Because at that point, it doesn't need the mother anymore. We can cut the umbilical cord. We don't need to kill it. <laughs> But why it's illegal for women to get an abortion? Sorry, say that again. It's already legal. So why why are you making a moral argument? It's legal for women to uh, kill their babies. Well, in America, uh, third believe. trimester abortions aren't legal. They are absolutely you, are, you are giving, in seven states. I can. Are you giving? I can also, yeah. Are you giving uh, a hypothetical? Halloween, Halloween. Let let Shell Shop finish. Let Shell Shop yeah. finish. Is trying to say something extra. No, listen, Halloween, not only are third trimester abortions legal, but like majority of them happen outside of fetal abnormality and medical necessity. Not only that, I don't understand this mentality that women don't get third trimester abortion. Like you cannot, like for example, women kill their born babies. Why is it so insane to think that 48 hours earlier they, would, they wouldn't kill it? Yep, so if a fetus... Uh has viability if it can live outside the womb then my thoughts are that it should be allowed to continue it should be allowed to stay alive it should be allowed to be supported by the hospital the mother whoever has the legal guardianship of that now baby right it, the the only thing that matters to me is that it can be removed from the womb that's the main point that i'm making is the autonomy to end the pregnancy if the child can stay alive outside of the pregnancy that's great i have no problem with that 
Okay, uh, Halloween, my, my second question is this. Uh, let's say I pick up a child, sear him onto my skin, and snap his neck. Can I claim body autonomy? Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, a creative <laughs> situation. So you He's think... like now dependent on my body, and I kill them. So you think that searing a child to your body is the same as a pregnancy? Is that is that what you want to go with? No, I think pregnant. No, no, I don't. But pregnancy <laughs> is uh, kinder. But you should under your viewpoint, that it should be. I should still be allowed to claim body autonomy. You okay? We'll go. We'll go down this road. So you have the right to remove the child from your body. However, the child has already been born. It's already been granted human rights. Babies, after they're delivered and they're no longer gestating within the mother, are now human beings with human rights. So if I attach somebody physically to my body, then I have potentially violated their bodily autonomy by forcing them to be attached to me because it's a child that can't consent to anything. So right there, I've already got a problem. But let's say in this world, that in, in this scenario that you've created that I get consent from someone and I consent to attach each other to our bodies, we still have the bodily autonomy to withdraw consent from that situation, both of us in that case. No, no hang on. Well, what, about, uh, what about the consent? Wait, uh, Halloween, you're doing this double thing. Okay, well, first of all, you agreed earlier that we can assume personhood starts at conception. But then you're saying human rights started birth. But let me ask you this. If human rights started one year post birth, right? Can I kill the baby when it's six months old? Uh, if the baby has human rights inside of the womb, it still doesn't have the right to the mother's body. No, uh, then, you, then you, your, your answer previously was incorrect because you said a baby that's born has human rights. So you, you were, again, you were making that same mistake. So again, I'm asking you this. Yeah. If a baby it is... Matter uh, if it is uh, let Shellshock finish Halloween. Let Shellshock finish. Go for it, Shellshock. If, a, if the baby gets human rights one year after it's born, can I now uh, get up, sear him onto my skin, and snap his neck and claim body autonomy? That's just not the case. That, that doesn't happen. Do you... Do you just okay, want to he's not going to engage with my hypothetical. I don't know what to do. Well, Mark, okay. can you tell me to answer the question? Yeah, shell shock, shell shock. No, um, just let him respond in the way that he wants to respond. So, Halloween, what were you saying? So, it sounds like you've created a scenario where we have infants that have been born that don't have human rights. I just want to confirm that, right? That's what you're setting up? You, you keep appealing to the legality. So I'm saying let's assume that a baby is born, uh, it takes one year after the baby is born for them to gain human rights. I, I, I will engage with your hypothetical, but I just want to acknowledge that this is, not, this is not how we treat it in the legal system, right? When a baby is born, it has certain rights. Um, but I'm granting rights to the fetus. You're taking them away in your hypothetical. So hypothetically, big asterisks on this, if we had a living organism that did not have human rights, then hypothetically, it would be legal to kill it. But that is not the reality that we live in. Okay, so uh, from my understanding that if tomorrow... We ban abortion and make it illegal. It seems like Halloween would agree. It doesn't seem like he, he cares about the morality of it at all. He just cares about the legality of it. If tomorrow yeah. we say it's okay to rape women, would you would you support that? We would both agree that no, no, it no, no, would no. be what I'm I'm asking the legality. I don't I don't yeah. care what I think. What do you, what, if it's legal? If it's the United Nations have signed uh, a treaty. You can rape women now. Would you support it? You keep going back to this, and I keep answering it in the same way. We would agree that it is legal, but we would also agree that it is immoral. 
Okay, so I, I, we can still do it. Legally, yes. Morally, we would be in agreement. Okay, final, final, final hypothetical. If I uh, shoot my gun and it kills somebody, am I responsible for that? Yes. Why? I consented to pulling my trigger. I didn't consent to the bullet uh, launching through the air and hitting somebody in the skull. Be <laughs> Sorry, okay. Because when you fire a gun, your right to shoot your gun ends at somebody else's bodily autonomy, right? We're getting back into this. So if I fire a bullet and it hits a mountainside, I haven't done anything wrong. If I fire a bullet and it hits a person, I have violated their right to consenting to have a bullet go inside of them. And that's why it's illegal. Same thing right. with being pregnant. So, so uh, Halloween, you're. Uh, can I not uh, make the claim that uh, you are uh, responsible for the consequences of your action when it comes to sh pulling the trigger? Of course, yeah, I would be responsible. Not, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, can I not make the same claim during uh, for sex that you are responsible for the situation that you yourself put yourself in? Consent to no. sex is consent to pregnancy. Consent to drinking is consent to getting drunk, no? Right. So consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy. Do you disagree that people I, have Not only do I disagree... Oh, but let, show, 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 show. Let him finish. Let him finish. He didn't actually finish what he was saying. Let him finish. Thanks, Mark. Uh, do you disagree that people have sex and don't want to get pregnant? Do you disagree with that? Yes. Sorry, no, so no, no, no. I don't disagree. I don't disagree, okay. sir. Okay. So we agree then that consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy. We agree on that, I think. Okay. Because when I drink and drive, I don't intend to kill somebody. Sure. But that doesn't mean I'm not responsible for the consequences of my actions. Well, you have killed somebody who is, has been granted right full human rights. They've been born. So you violated somebody else's bodily autonomy by choosing to get in the car while you're drunk. You've also violated some laws. But having sex and then terminating the pregnancy does not violate laws in some states. Getting in a car drunk and hitting somebody does violate several laws. So it's a flawed analogy. Halloween, you keep you keep appealing to the legality of things. Like it, it's it, it's a valid argument. Legality comes from our morality. If we cannot even explain why it's wrong, then why would we make it legal? Why would we make we're it illegal? Talking in circles. We're, we're talking in yeah, circles Halloween, now. You keep appealing to the legality fallacy. Do we, you know what I think? I think if rape was legal, you'd be making the same argument. That's how insane your your appealing to legality fallacy is. Well, you, you we, would making both, that claim. we would both agree that if rape was made legal, we would both have to state, as a matter of fact, that it has been made legal. We would not agree that it is moral. And I and I would be I would be shocked to find a society that votes uh, legalizing rape into law. But that's that's a <laughs> that half the population probably at least wouldn't like that. Right. But that's a whole other matter. Um, but you you agree. I'll go back to this argument. Immoral things are not always illegal and moral things uh, are not always or sorry. And legal things are not always immoral. Morality and legality are not tied together. They're not mutually exclusive. I, I know they're not mutually exclusive. But when we're talking about killing another human being, it feels pretty related. I mean, I, it doesn't matter what it feels like, right? The, the whole point of my argument, it, it's a legal argument. It, 
I stated in my opening statement that I throw morality out. I'm happy to entertain it. I'm happy to talk about it. But I personally don't consider the morality of abortion when I'm talking about this. It's about bodily autonomy okay. for me. In, in Pakistan, abortion is illegal, right? Okay. Uh, would you would you uh, would you want to change the law? Uh, I think that women should have bodily autonomy. So yes, I think that they should morally have they should have bodily autonomy. Correct? No, I think legally they should have it. I think that legally, legally they should they have the right to withdraw consent to pregnancy. Legally, they don't have the right to kill their baby. Okay. Yeah, that's a matter of fact. Yeah, I, I don't know how to de debate this. Like, legitimately, Halloween, your entire reasoning is that it because it's legal, it's okay. Like, I... Yeah, I, I don't it's unassailable, it's right? Bodily autonomy it's, is unassailable. This is why I... This is why I prescribe to... This is why I prescribe to this argument. So... At the end of the day, it is a woman's right to choose what she wants to do with her own body. And and nobody can take that away or should be allowed to take that away. So you're sitting here arguing the morality of it. And I'm arguing that consent to pregnancy is not consent to stay pregnant and consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy. She can withdraw it at any time. Uh, well, you, you're... <laughs> You haven't actually explained why consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy. I explain. I, I I said is consent to drinking, consent to getting drunk. You said yes. I asked is consent to shooting my gun, consent to being responsible for the consequences of my actions if that uh, bullet kills somebody. You said yes, but the reason you said it oh because it's illegal to kill somebody else. Like that's not an argument. Like if it was legal, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't have consented to that. Like that doesn't make any sense. So Secondly, why do you go to jail if you kill somebody? Or my God, Halloween! It's not up. Okay, I, I I cannot argue about it legality. We can imp, we can talk about how we would implement the laws. That would be related about to legality. But if your argument is why do people go to jail? Like, what kind of question is that? That is actually crazy. If we don't go to jail, it's com completely acceptable. I've answered so many of your crazy hypotheticals, and you can't answer me the question of why do you go to jail if you shoot somebody you can't answer that i guess not halloween i think it's immoral that's why you 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 sent to prison after killing another human being yes no you're you're not sent to prison because it's immoral you're sent to prison because it's against the law okay halloween uh yeah no i don't i don't know i don't, I don't think hard I have one. any other question this guy basically said that uh you know, uh, legality and immorality are two different things, and you can kill human beings legally. Uh, I've already well, demonstrated it's about, it. Uh, just a second, guys. It's about 40 minutes through. We had a bit of extra time because Shellshot sort of gave up his, or did, only did a few set of sentence for his opening. But um, would you like to continue? Maybe give it another 10 minutes or so? No, I don't, I don't think I have anything else to say. Uh, I, I don't know how to debate somebody who just keeps appealing to the law constantly as their source of legality. In a sense, Halloween is appealing to the law as his morality indirectly, but you know, it is what it is. I'm appealing to bodily autonomy. So I, I think that this is very important. I think that bodily autonomy is one of the most basic human rights. You can sit here and say, oh, Halloween is just stating the law, but it's a matter of fact that women have bodily autonomy just like you and I do, and they have the right to withdraw consent to pregnancy. I don't see why you're arguing that they should be forced to incubate a fetus for nine months because that's what you're doing at the end of the day is you're forcing them to remain pregnant by outlawing abortion. Okay, uh, Halloween, even you agreed that body autonomy is not completely unassailable because uh, you would force a woman to breastfeed her baby, correct? If she's the only one that could provide for it. No, I'm saying that a woman who has agreed to be the parental guardian doesn't have to breastfeed her baby, but she has a she has a legal responsibility to care for the child. Right, right. And if she's uh, in the middle of nowhere, she's the only one that can provide for it. 
would you would you say and if he doesn't uh, breastfeed the baby the baby will die would she be okay. held legally responsible for it let me ask you a question uh if she was in the middle of nowhere she had no milk left but she's still the legal guardian of the baby and she had no food no water no nothing no resources she could give the baby and the baby died while she was traveling with it do you think that she's done something wrong yes She's done she something wrong child, right? by not being able to provide the child resources when there are literally no resources. You think that? Wait, wait, no, no. I was, I was under the impression this is still a baby. She can she it breastfeed baby. the baby or not? She's out of milk. Wait, so she cannot provide for the baby through any means. Correct. Then no, then no, she's not responsible unless she put herself in that position with the baby, but not. Uh, otherwise, no, she's not responsible. Okay, so now we'll we'll say that she has milk and she has a legal responsibility to that child. Legally, she should keep it alive through any means necessarily. Yes. Right. So we don't have a problem there. I th I am in agreement with you that if it is her legal responsibility to care for the child, that she would need to breastfeed the child if she is able to, because it's her agreement as the legal guardian of that child to keep it alive as, as much as reasonably possible. Uh, so again, you, you would force the woman to breastfeed her child at that point. Nobody's forcing her. She has consented to be the legal guardian of the child. Nobody forced Holy her to that position. Okay, I, I got I got nothing more to say. By okay, the way, Halloween. Oh, wait, uh, Halloween. I don't understand. Why did you say that my hypothetical was completely ridiculous? But then you also used the violinist hypothetical. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't, uh, I did put in my opening statement that no analogy is going to be perfect or completely analogous to pregnancy, right? Pregnancy is, um, it's unlike anything else. So I think we both agree no analogy is going to be perfectly the same thing as pregnancy. There is one that's pretty close. But it's not exact, right? Like, no, no, not a hypothetical, like a real life thing. We use analogies to try to kind of intuition pump things it, it we we don't use them because they're perfect true uh for example uh conjoined twins right yeah this has been this has already been uh this has already gone through the legal system conjoined twins both have an equal claim to the body it is both of their heart it's both of their lungs whatever it's they they both have equal legal claim to that body no, that's uh, that's. I don't think that's true. They both have uh, a legal uh, right not to be killed. So, for, uh, and they both have uh, essentially, if one conjoined twin is trans and the other conjoined twin is not, conjoined twin uh, that's trans cannot take hormone therapy because it would affect conjoined twin B. But it's not both of their body. They're sh they might be sharing some autonomy, and uh, actions they commit affects both of them. But it's not. Uh, but I don't think that there. It is both of their body, like this, like. Uh, this has already. Uh, this has already gone through the court system. Like you're you're gonna have to argue it with the judges. They legally both have the same right to that shared body. That has already uh, been tried and true in the justice system. Ha Halloween. You need to stop appealing to the law. Every time you appeal to the law, all I hear is this: is this guy saying. Hey, if rape was legal, yeah, then I can't say anything about it. Like, it, it stop appealing to the yeah. law. It literally it ma makes me ick. That makes me ick more than the fucking a third trimester abortions. Well, I know you don't like it, but the, f the, the fact of the matter is that they both have bodily autonomy with the same body. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, we can talk about the morality, but I've already demonstrated that moral and immoral things do not coincide with legal and illegal things. And in this case, I think that bodily autonomy 
is one of the most basic human rights that a woman can have. And I think that it's good that it's held up legally. Yeah, no, I I agree. I just don't think it would it would apply to situations that you yourself created. Otherwise, you can pick up a child, sear him onto your skin, and snap his neck. But you no, said I, it, I it would be legal. Why. I explained you, you why it that's would be not legal. legal. If it doesn't have human rights. You, which is not like we don't grant uh, human rights to fetuses, but we do grant them to people who have been born. Right, and I said to you, if baby, if ba- uh, if baby's got uh, a legal rights one year after it's born, then I can pick up the child, sear him onto my skin, and snap his neck. We would both agree that there would be nothing illegal about that, but we would also both agree that that would be an immoral thing to let uh, humans that have been born be killed for, you know, no reason just because they don't have human rights. We would agree that that was immoral. I just want you to understand, Halloween, if this was Nazi Germany or the 1800s, you'd also be advocating for slavery and the Holocaust because you keep appealing to the legality of it. But we'd both agree it was immoral. We would both agree that slavery is immoral. Uh, anyways, we're kind of talking okay. in circles here. So if we want, I, we can I go. Just yeah. to, I, I just want to sort of end this with uh, kind of testing. Well, of I can give you a closing argument. Uh, Shell shock. I can give you closing arguments, maybe after Q and A, when when you know we've gone through everything, five just minutes. to wrap it up nicely. Sorry, five minutes. Let me just uh, five and minutes? Uh, five minutes with okay. Uh, Halloween. Okay, Halloween. Sure. You you still there? As long as that's okay with Halloween, yep, I'm still here. Right, we'll uh, hit Fifty minute uh, mark. But... If you want to do a closing oh, statement, that's totally fine with me. But if you're going to do a closing statement, then I'm going to do one as well. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, well, I think I think shell shock. It's closing statements fine. We'll do a couple of minutes after the question Q and A. Um, but I think shell shock wants five more minutes of discussion. Am I hearing that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you okay, want to have so a discussion? Yeah, yeah. Five more Halloween. minutes of discussion. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You, you support right, abortion for any reason? You support abortion for any reason? Yes, I support a woman's right to detach a fetus from her womb right but before viability like 19 weeks that's that's there's no detachment the baby dies yes the child dies as a result of it being removed from the womb yes and you agree that it does not have any human rights correct legally speaking we don't grant fetuses human rights that's just a matter of fact no no, not we you i do i'm talking you might, I don't know if you're a judge, but I'm talking about the legal system, Shellshock. Okay, you said we, you said we, so I'm a... When I say we, uh, I'm, obvious, I'm talking about the our legal system, like the United okay. States of America's legal system. I'm not American. Okay, that's fine. I'm talking about when you say we, rights. It's confusing. Can, you te- can you name me a country that grants human rights to fetuses? Pakistan. So you have the you have the actual law. Yes. Yeah, I'd be very interested to see human rights being given to a fetus. Poland as well. Yeah, if you can post it, I'd love to look at it. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll post it later. But uh, so any reason whatsoever, a fetus does not have human rights in America. Correct. Correct. Okay. so if I wanted to abort a baby, because I find that the gender of my baby is female, I can do that? Yep. If I find the if my baby is black and I abort it because of that reason, that's acceptable? Yep. Okay, so uh, we agree that a baby does not have human rights, correct? Yes. You agree that, uh, well, okay, so- fetus, Not a baby. Yeah, fetus, sorry, sorry, fetus, fetus, fetus. Uh, so I can sexually violate a 19 week old fetus? Uh, how would you do that? Like, what? <laughs> well, I'll take a tool and Is I'll open dead? up a vagina inside the womb and I'll just shove it right in there. <laughs> I don't think that that's, uh, I don't think that's possible. Like, I don't think you can open somebody up and then sexually violate a fetus while it is still gestating. 
I'll figure out a way. Okay. So you think uh, it I think should that be would violate the woman's. I think that would violate the woman's bodily autonomy that you're opening up. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, ask her maybe consent. we can. Maybe I'll we can sort consent. of. This, this this is pretty graphic and pretty, um, you know, sort of uh, uh, shocking. Um, maybe maybe let's let's get a get a sort of more reasonable topic than than splitting people open. Well, I, that that is literally the entire point of the uh, topic of abortion, Mark. Come on. If I can kill it, I can surely sexually violate it. Uh, yeah, shell shock. I, I don't think this is really appropriate for a 13 plus server. So um, maybe maybe let's move on to some other sort of thing. Okay. Than, if than... Halloween has something else to say, we can move to the Q&A. Uh, I, think, I think we've kind of gone over everything that I wanted to chat about with you. Um, Again, I'm willing to grant a fetus personhood that doesn't really affect my argument. At the end of the day, it's all about a woman's right to choose what happens with her own body. Um, but we can go to Q&A. I don't have any other discussion questions for you, Shellshock. OK, no problem. Um, and I think we're just on sort of three minutes over, which is fine. No problem at all. Um, I will grab the questions. And thank you so much, both of you, for participating in this really fantastic debate. Uh, I just have to move myself because I'm in an awkward spot. Sorry. Okay, so first question from Gibson. Thank you. Uh, Shellshock, would you be against abortion in the event of a rape if the victim were an adult? Yes, I'd be against it. Okay, short and sweet. Uh, do you have anything to add there, Halloween? At least he's consistent. That's that's what I have to add. I'm glad that he's at least consistent because that's a failing of a lot of people who argue this is that when they say, oh, in cases of rape and incest, we can go ahead and abort it. Well, then their whole argument falls apart because they're usually granting uh, human rights to a fetus. And then what are we doing? We're killing a person and their rights go away in this special scenario. So I applaud you for being consistent, Shellshock. There you go. Some mutual respect. That's fantastic. Uh, next question is from Nell. Thank you, Nell. Shellshock, does a woman's opinion on her body matter less than a being that has no way to defend their opinions on the life that has barely started? So I'm just going to read that again. Shellshock, does a woman's opinion on her body matter less than a being that has no way to defend their opinions on the life that has barely started? Like in outside the context of abortion, like the the answer is actually yes, but no, no, you can't. Uh, you uh, because the I mean yes, her opinion matters less. Yes. So her opinion matters less than yes. the opinions of the life that has barely started. Okay. And then, well, um, yeah, in this case, the opinion being the right to life of the fetus. Okay, and and Halloween, do you have anything to add on that? I think that that perfectly illustrates the problem with Shellshock's outlook on the situation. He values a we can we can debate at when a fetus becomes conscious, but he values essentially a zygote's non-existent opinions over the opinions of the person whose body is being used to care for it. And Shellshock, did you want to? Does a baby have an opinion? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, Dream Space, um, sending in a question from Mark Reid. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm a, a lot better. I'm, I'm, I, I just woke up when the debate started, so I, I apologize for the low energy, Mark, but I'm doing fantastic now. Thank you, Dream Space. At least someone cares about the moderator. There you go. Um, <laughs> um, next question from Kenji to Shellshock. When pregnancy happens, a lot of sperm cells die since only a few may enter the egg. In theory, for this hypothetical, if someone if someone were to have a baby but won't be able to live giving birth, would you prefer a humane way for the abortion or the death of said person? Um, okay, okay, and I'll leave the. There's a second bit. So when a pregnancy happens, a lot of sperm cells die since only a few may enter the egg. Well, usually one, but 
you know, let's let's put that aside. No. In theory, for this hypothetical, if someone were to have a baby but won't be able to live giving birth, sorry, live, not live, live giving birth, would you prefer a humane way for the abortion or the death of said person? I think he's saying that if the mother's life is at risk, in which case I've already made it clear, we're not going to go into the graphic hypothetical I use, but uh, yes, you can get an abortion if the mother's life is at risk. Okay, and in a different hypothetical where she lives, wouldn't it be more humane to abort the fetus in a painless way for both the future child and the pregnant person? Speaking on the part of rights, by the way. Wait, wait, can you repeat the question? And in a different hypothetical where she lives, wouldn't it be more humane to abort the fetus in a painless way for both the future child and the pregnant person? Speaking on the part of rights, by the way. I'm... I'm confused here is he is he saying the there is no um i don't understand the question um well i mean kenji if you can give us some clarification on what you mean um that that's perfectly fine as far as i'm seeing it um i i'm not exactly sure what their point is i think they're just sort of saying um wouldn't it be better to maybe um do it in a painless way than them doing it in a in a painful way um, I think it's probably about the time we're talking about uh, the 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 uh, uh, skull crushing thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Obviously, I'd prefer it in a painless way than a painful way. If the mother's life is at risk, then uh, then we have to end the pregnancy, and then the second uh, uh, the second uh, argument becomes okay. Well, how do we end the pregnancy that it results in the least harm for the mother and the child, right? Yep, no problem. Um, I just want to, uh, Rex, if you want to ask a question, send it to the MDD debate questions, not me. I, I, I'll i be reading the question, so I won't be able to keep an eye on chat. You're, you're actually lucky I saw that one. Um, next question from anti2LGBTQIAAP+. Can we please not do any abortion debates? Well, it's not the spirit of a, a debate server. Um, it's it's a serious issue, and I think it should be treated seriously. Um, there's there's it's very decised, the divisive. There's there's opinions on both sides, and I think the only way that we're going to get any kind of um, what we what we should do and what we shouldn't do is to talk about these things and to discuss them. So um, I don't see why we shouldn't discuss that, um, unless you're sort of saying, well. We should just agree with your side or or this other person's side or just one side. Um, the entire foundation of Western civilization is based upon debate and discussion. So um, I, I think that it's more than reasonable. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any opinions about that? Also, like this guy joined the server, joined the open debate stage, and is upset. <laughs> that there's an abortion it says it's an abortion debate at the top of the server it says modern day debate and i would argue <laughs> that if you're joining a server that has debate in the name you should probably expect debates maybe maybe a little maybe a, a tiny <laughs> tiny bit um yeah good point good point both of you um kenji strikes again thank you kenji for halloween what are your main views on abortion that you weren't able to say due to time if you didn't have the chance to add? And can you elaborate a bit more on less painful? Is this for me? Uh, for Halloween, apparently. I don't know about less painful. If I, if I claimed that something was less painful, um, that you might have to remind me. Uh, so I don't know about that one. And then in terms um, of... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think it was to do with the skull crushing. He said it would be less painful hmm. for the fetus and for the mother. So he wants to elaborate on what do you mean by less painful? It's actually less traumatic is what I said, not painful. So by traumatic, I mean damage to the mother's body. So we're trying to remove the fetus in the most efficient way that will do the least amount of damage to the mother's body. That's what I mean by less traumatic uh there's many ways abortions are done 
uh i don't i won't get super graphic about it but i'm just gonna put out there that there's there's an argument that the child is feeling any pain at all and the way that abortions are done removes a lot of the risk of the burgeoning life uh feeling any sort of pain and before a certain amount of weeks i think it could be argued that it doesn't feel pain it responds to stimuli uh show shock do you have any anything to add from that one no okay no problem at all okay and gibson back with gibson thank you gibson for halloween how late into the pregnancy would you not be okay with abortion if at all i, I, all nine months, right? I am okay with uh, abortion up to any point of pregnancy however with the caveat that if the fetus is viable i think that it should be delivered instead of uh aborted i think there's a difference there okay uh quick follow-up question if a woman is uh, only has the uh, capacity to get an abortion but not an early delivery what do you think uh, can she still get an abortion can she still kill the baby she can withdraw consent to the use of her body at any point in the nine months yes okay uh, let, let, let me rephrase okay you said yes fine fine never mind Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with a bit of back and forth. I, if you if you do have anything I else to add, Halloween. Something. Yeah, yeah, of course. People in the chat keep saying that like masturbating is killing, uh, using contraceptives is killing. So I think Shellshock would agree with me that life starts at conception, and so when we're talking about like these kinds of things that happen outside of conception that's a bad argument for saying that oh you know you're committing genocide every time you masturbate or whatever do you would you agree with that shell shock that the masturbation is murder yeah no i don't agree with that okay well we're in agreement then um can you just sending me something a question of difference the mother would live and other die to understand shell shock's point of view okay thanks kenji also a heads up the shell shock being pregnant question is right one of mine now are consistent uh not to mock the debate no i got you kenji no i i, I do understand you're just asking questions I, I get it i get it no problem at all mate um and and thanks for your questions really appreciate it uh next question is from okra as i hope i'm pronouncing that right okra says for halloween what is the point of an abortion debate about whether abortion is legal it's a fact that it's illegal in some place and, uh, and illegal in other places I think everyone is entering the debate is assuming the topic is what the law ought to be rather than what miscellaneous laws say is and isn't legal. The question were the if the question were the latter, we could just look up the answer and skip the debate altogether. So Yep. So yep. Shellshock is arguing that it should be illegal, and I am arguing that it should remain legal in some states and be legalized uh around the world, really. I think that bodily autonomy is an important human right. So I'm not saying, hey, it's currently legal in California to get an abortion. That's just a matter of fact. I'm saying that it's a good thing that it's legal and we should legalize it in more places. And Shellshock is saying it's immoral and we should make it illegal. Uh, Shellshock, do you, do you agree with that? Or do you have stuff to add? I mean, no, I have, I have nothing to add. Okay. Uh, and question from Sam Lowry. Yeah, sorry, Sam, we can't sort of do, um, you can't come up to ask in person, but I'll, I'll certainly try to read it out as best I can. Should a person be held, should a person be held morally accountable for the things that their action reasonably entails? such as playing Russian roulette in a Walmart on other people, even though there was a five in six chance that the round would never leave the chamber, or having consensual intercourse and getting an unwanted pregnancy. I presume that's for Halloween. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so, mate. Okay. So if you go into a Walmart and play Russian roulette with people, to make this analogous to having sex, 
we would need for murder to be legal if someone is consenting and the person would have to consent to you putting the gun against their head and pulling the trigger knowing full well the risks so uh if if that if all that fell into place then sure but uh in reality if you walk into a walmart and start pulling the trigger against people's heads that is violating uh laws that's violating their bodily autonomy that's violating all kinds of things so it's it's not analogous to me okay anything to add show show no show no 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 okay okay um next question is from blight thank you blight for halloween how do you decide when an immoral thing should nevertheless be illegal uh i don't decide we as a collective civilization decide so uh if, if something is immoral it generally follows that the collective society is going to vote some sort of law um to deal with it but it doesn't always so if you want to know my personal opinion I don't think that my personal morality should decide any laws. Uh, I think that your own moral, I think your own morality is a personal choice that you make. This is why lots of people don't cheat on their partners. And this is why lots of people do cheat on their partners. They're not thinking, oh, is this legal or not? They're just considering the morality of it. Halloween. So if uh, everyone in society decided that uh, if a Discord user named Halloween that has a cat profile picture doesn't deserve human rights, you're just going to live with that? Uh, so are you saying that a law would be passed against just me that I shouldn't have human rights? Yeah. Well, uh, that does happen. So we do take rights away from prisoners. We have decided... Uh, as a society that there are certain rights that prisoners give up when they've committed a crime so heinous that they deserve to be in jail so as long as there was sufficient reason for it i'm okay with my rights being taken away the, the reason is this the reason is this if you have a cat profile picture and your uh, username is halloween i just reject i just reject uh your hypothetical like it's that's okay. kind of silly <laughs> That's because you keep appealing to the law. So when I'm using it against you, it doesn't feel too good. No, I just admitted that I'd be okay with my rights being taken away. It's just silly yeah, for you to suggest you. that it would be that my rights would get taken away in a world because I have a cat profile picture and my name's Halloween. That's like, that's silly that we know that's never going to happen. I thought, I think it's pretty silly that we remove human rights based on the color of their skin. But, you know, that happened. Yeah, I agree. And And what happened after... Uh, the civil rights movement. What did society do? Oh, yeah, stop slavery. Oh, so you'd be okay with uh, you being imprisoned, you be uh, and uh, uh, going to prison for having a cat profile picture and username Halloween for a hundred years? Because after that, it will probably be removed. I would probably change my profile picture and my name. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that was for Halloween. So, did you want a yeah, yeah, last word, add. Halloween, or are you? Okay. Yeah. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, there is a second part to that question. Um, to Halloween, where did we get the human right of bodily autonomy? Uh, it's granted by the legal system. <laughs> okay. Rights are granted by our legal system. I guess the answer okay, he's probably uh, searching for is uh, it comes from the agreement amongst all humans that we don't want people to be able to violate our body in a way we don't like. So because of that initial desire, it was agreed upon in society and voted into law, if, that's, if you want me to go further back. Okay, and uh, Kenji strikes again. Oh, this is the, the the okay. So this is for shell shock. Snapping people's necks, hypotheticals aside, 
the question might seem weird, but it has a reason. And yeah, I know I understand it, Kenji. Um, can you tell me how you think it feels to be pregnant? Reason why I ask is to know what you would do if you were pregnant, knowing that you would have throughout more than a week uh, high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, infections, preeclampsia, preterm labor, depression, anxiety, etc. when you can abort for your health, whether not only physical, but also mental due to the responsibility. So he's asking how you would feel if you were in that situation and had those problems. I'd probably feel pretty awful. Doesn't justify killing another human being, though. Uh, but by the way, when he started saying uh, high blood pressure, and uh, what else did he say? Gestational diabetes, infections, preeclampsia, preterm labor, uh, depression, yeah, and anxiety. When he started saying uh, infection, depression, I was like, wait, am I halfway pregnant already? But no, like I said. I said, uh, when he started saying stuff like infection, depression, a high blood pressure, I was like, am I halfway through pregnancy already? Oh, well, um, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I think you're that saying that you're joke. depressed and anxious. Is that, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, oh, that's, come on, man. <laughs> that's, all right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I think that depression and anxiety is a problem in society. I, I don't think it's a, a joke and matter. Um, but that's just me, um, and we can debate on that if you want. Um, have you got anything to add, Halloween? Uh, I think the question is trying to, like, garner sympathy for someone who's pregnant. And uh, I would just argue that I don't, I, don't, I don't think we need to go there. I don't think we need to try to make people feel bad about the mother so that she can get an abortion, I think. Lots of women go through abortion, understand, or sorry, go through pregnancy, understanding the changes it's going to uh, cause in their body. Uh, they go through it because they want to be parents. And I, I don't, I don't think that that should deter somebody from having a child. Well, the question was for Shellshock. So do you have anything else to sort of come back with Shellshock? No, not really. Okay. Um, the next one is from ASIL PS. Thank you, ASIL. Um, this question is for both parties. Is any of you pro capital punishment in case of murder? Um, last one was just shell shock. So, Halloween, maybe we'll get your you first on this one. Uh, capital punishment. Ooh. I I go back and forth on this one because I think that uh, we we find okay. So it costs more money to kill somebody than it does to keep them alive in the prison system there's a risk that evidence could be found that exonerates them after they've been killed and i think that human beings who are in prison can potentially still live a fulfilling life as fulfilling as they can when they're in prison and if they want to they should be allowed to live out that life however I do think that if a prisoner wants to take their own life, they should be allowed to do that uh, if they want to. Okay. And uh, Shellshock, do you have any, what, what's your stance on that one? Uh, I don't really have any strong feelings. So you're not, you're, you're, you're ambivalent or you don't, don't care about capital punishment in case of murder? Um, I'm mixed on it, to be honest. Uh, okay. The only argument that seems to be valid is that, you know, prison systems are meant to be re for reforming. But, like, uh, when they make the claim that innocent people suffer, like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Because innocent people are always going to suffer. And we don't remove uh, punishments for those people. So why would we remove punishment for murder? Okay. Um, next question from Okras. For Halloween, why do you keep saying that your argument is based on the value of bodily autonomy, mo moral uh, in brackets, uh, bodily autonomy? I think they're saying bodily autonomy is a moral argument. When you kept saying that what matters is adjudicated by the court, which is legal, um, which, which is your case based on? You seem to go back and forth. 
Yeah, I'm saying that I think that bodily autonomy is a good right that we have, and I think that we should keep that right. Uh, I think that the right of bodily autonomy should not be violated by forcing women to remain pregnant. So there is a there is some morality there in me saying that I think it's I think bodily autonomy is a good thing. I think you would be hard pressed to find people who think that bodily autonomy is not good. Okay, and Shell Shop, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. Um, Bal Diablo, thank you so much for the question. For Halloween, is abortion immoral? They really want to get your morals out of you, Halloween, <laughs> so be prepared for that. Is abortion immoral? Uh. Okay, we can get into, so this is a completely other argument, but I think uh, before 20 weeks that abortion is not immoral. I think after 20 weeks, uh, we get into questions of, is it having a conscious experience? If it's having a conscious experience, then I think that you could argue that it becomes immoral. But that does not supersede my argument of bodily autonomy i think that bodily autonomy is more important than the moral argument okay shell shop do you have anything to add on that one no no okay. shell shock's too busy in the chat <laughs> oh really there's another debate going on is there yeah that I'm missing? <laughs> damn damn He's damn these questions debate, no we yeah. love we love we love the questions we love the questions okay and back with gibson thank you gibson um shell shock would you be okay with okay hang on would you be okay with the morning after pill after all are you okay overall are you okay with contraception uh, i'm okay with contraception provided it doesn't uh, affect a fertilized egg so if it affects the unfertilized egg or it affects the sperm i don't particularly care Okay. And what about the morning after pill? Yeah, I th uh, so I've, I've gotten a lot of mixed reports from this, but from what I understand, morning after pill, it also affects a fertilized egg. And as such, I would have to be against it. Okay. So you're, you're sort of taking the stance life begins at conception kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that's been okay. Come on, Mark, you've like to moderate four of my debates at this point. No, well, you know, I, I, I do try. Um, uh, Halloween, do you have anything to add to that one? Yeah, I would, I would just point out that um, I think that, so obviously I'm okay with the morning after pill, uh, but I think that to get to what you're saying, Shellshock, that life begins at conception, I think it's important to note that doctors go in when a fetus is just a clump of cells still they can remove one of the cells to test it for all kinds of like genetic diseases to see you know to predict if there's going to be a problem with the pregnancy i think there's a big difference between a clump of cells that you can go in and remove an eighth of it right i can't remove an eighth of you shell shock and you'll be fine i think there's a big difference between a clump of cells and something that resembles a, a human baby there's also a pretty big difference between a human baby and an adult absolutely i agree okay did you want the final word shell shock uh, it was a question yeah, for you he he just said that's, that's fine, fine. I, I have a, he just said okay. that's the word that's fine right all right, no worries at all. I just want to make sure you have an opportunity to address the question as much as as much as you wish to, because it was for you, mate. Um, Rex says at Mark Reed. Okay, I'm not sure why this is directed to me. I'm I'm the moderator, but I think it's for somebody. Um, is it okay to abuse the unborn with meth and cause them addiction and deformity? Should we keep that legal or make abusing your child illegal before birth? Um, I think maybe this is for Halloween. So I'll start up with Halloween, but you know, feel free. I, I don't know who it's for. So apparently it's for me, but um, yeah. So uh, I think that you can, I think the mother has 
bodily autonomy. We'll, we'll say drinking because using drugs is illegal in general. So if the mother wants to drink, then legally she can do it and that's fine. I think morally she's probably being, I, I think she's probably being immoral by doing that if she plans to carry the child to uh, delivery. Um, but I, I don't have a problem legally with uh, somebody doing whatever they want with their body because the fetus inside it has not been granted the same rights that uh, the mother has. And Shosho, what's your, your opinion on that one? Uh, or you too busy debating in chat? <laughs> yeah. Is it okay to abuse the unborn yeah. with meth and cause them addiction and deformity? Should we keep that legal or make abusing your child illegal before birth? Uh, uh, we should make it illegal. I, why, why, I don't think this question is aimed at me. I think it was aimed at Halloween. Okay, sure, sure. No problem. Um, and a question from KC. Uh, thank you, KC. If we grant personhoods and rights to fetuses, should we be giving them access, social security numbers and citizenships? That way mothers can enroll in things like life insurance policy for every miscarriage. Shouldn't we be investigating every miscarriage as we would an accidental death to any born child? That's probably the use, show, show. Yes. So, first of all, we don't actually investigate every single child that dies. For example, if a child that dies in uh, uh, of cancer, we don't do a criminal investigation behind it. When the chance of death for somebody is so high, and we usually know around the situations for it, we usually need a reason to follow through with a criminal investigation. There was another question. What did? What was that? Uh, sorry, just give me one second. I just uh, have broken the, the Q dump command. I'll just grab it again. Um, shouldn't we be investigating every miscarriage as we would an accidental death to any born child? Okay. Uh, I answered this question. What's the uh, other part? Oh, um, um, if if. Uh, we grant personhood and rights to fetuses. Shouldn't we be giving them access to social security numbers and citizenships? That way the mothers can enroll in things like life insurance policies for every miscarriage. No, not that, well, we can, but not, not, it's not, it's not like a big deal or anything. If you, if you want to vote for that, you can, if you don't want to vote for it, you can't, you, you don't have to. Uh, Halloween, do you have anything to add to that? Sorry, I zoned out because I was in the chat this time. Yeah, yeah he was debating. <laughs> guilty, guilty. Did you name me the right to question again? Uh, sure, I'll take a crack at it. Uh, if we grant personhood and rights to fetuses, should we be giving them access to social security numbers and citizenships? That way mothers can enroll in things like life insurance policies for every miscarriage. Shouldn't we be investigating every miscarriage as we would an accidental death to any born child? Yep, it's a great point. I've heard this point before. Uh, as soon as we grant rights to the fetus, uh, if there's a miscarriage, you then have to treat that as a crime scene. You have to treat that as a potential murder. Somebody has to investigate it. You get a whole bunch of problems. I do push back, though, and say that even if we have to put in changes to our legal system, arguing that it's going to be complex to solve these problems isn't a good argument against um, you know, granting a fetus personhood. Uh, I personally don't care if we grant the fetus personhood. Okay. Um, and the last question for shell shock, if a woman has a 51% risk of having a miscarriage because of their genes, should they be prosecuted for attempting to have a child that resulted in a miscarriage? Uh, no, even if they if there was a ninety nine percent chance, it wouldn't be uh, illegal. It, it wouldn't be illegal because having some quality of life, uh, having a chance of quality of life, is better than having no quality of life. For example, if a person's in a coma, and I and a, and a doctor tells me, okay, you can plug yourself up to this guy, but there's a ninety nine percent chance that he'll die, and it, uh, or you can uh, choose to permanently put this person in a coma and I take that chance, it's not illegal 
for for this procedure to uh, fail. I wouldn't be charged manslaughter. I wanted to give this person a chance of life, even if it was only one percent. So just because there's a, a more than fifty percent chance of the of a miscarriage happening, doesn't mean that it's a, it's attempted murder. Some quality of life would or would typically automatically be better than no quality of life. Yeah, I'd agree with and, that. Shell shock. Okay, fantastic. Um, some agreement there, which is great to find some common ground. Um, that's the last question. So unless you've got anything else, would you like a couple of minutes, guys, to um, um, uh, give a, a final statement? I, I can, I can uh, accommodate that. Do you want to, Shellshock, since I started? No, you can go first. Uh, well, usually it's bookended. So the way that debates are done is the person that um, starts the opening of the debate is the person that ends, essentially. Okay, I'll start, I guess. Um, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's it. <laughs> Okay. Um, do we have a link for your YouTube channel? Is a question. I, mean, I, I do have one on mine. Uh, yeah, if you could link it, that would be fantastic. So yeah, do do give a plug if you do want to. Absolutely. Um, and uh, Halloween, while he's doing that, do you want to take it away? To couple, just a couple of minutes. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'll just state that again. I think that the bodily autonomy right is an unassailable argument. Uh, I think that what we've shown today is that we're getting a lot of arguments from emotion. We're getting a lot of arguments from personhood. I, I again, throw all that out the window. I think that the mother's right to consent to pregnancy is more important than even if you want to grant the fetus rights. Uh, that fetus's rights to uh, another person's womb. Um, I think that there's a big difference when we talk about a fetus versus a born baby. And I think that uh, I was able to show that here today. But I just want to thank uh, Mark again, you for moderating. Yeah. And thanks, Modern Day Debates, for having us. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a fantastic debate. Thank you for your time and, and thank you for putting forward your views. It's always great to have a really reasonable discussion. It's always fantastic. Um, do check out the YouTube channel if you do want more debates. Um, there are debaters over there doing all kinds of topics from flat earth to uh, science to religion to uh, social issues. And do um, invite your friends to the server. Um, share it around. We are trying to get to more and more debates happening, so you'll see more and more uh, stuff going up. Um, the, the debate, yes, Kenji, that's a good point. The debate will be on my channel. Um, I might link that in the chat, but I really want to thank you, Shellshock, and I'm sure I'll see you around soon. Um, and thank you, Halloween, who I've never met before. It is a, is a pleasure to meet you. Um, and we do have another debate. If, you, if, you're, if you're thirsty for more, we do have another debate coming up in um uh hosted by um uh dream space sorry lost my mind there for a second so dream space is hosting that one and that is on capitalism no is is capitalism outdated if it is is socialism a viable option so it's going to be a good old um socio uh, economic debate there um and i just linked my channel in the chat i will put it up there of course i will need to edit and stuff first so give me a little bit of time but thank you so much for coming thank you for your time be kind to yourself be kind to each other and uh, if you do want to head to the channels i'm sure people will be debating this topic and and lots of other topics um, but thank you very much and have a good day thank you for watching liking and subscribing this video and i want to give a big thank you to all the channel members whose support allows me to bring you more content like this in the future thank you so much everyone